All right, great to have you guys here with us tonight. We're going to go to Colossians chapter number 3. Colossians chapter number 3. And uh, just wanted to share a couple truths with you from, from God's Word, stuff that God's working on me uh, about. And so I figured, hey, he's working on me. Maybe I'll share some of these verses with you. And uh, this will be a help to all of us, and we can work on them together. But we're in Colossians chapter 3, and again, we're at the new year, and I think today is, I want to say the 13th, I didn't look to be honest with you, yeah, the 13th today, and uh, so you know, we're, uh, I heard yesterday, and this is what I heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but I was watching Fox News and they said yesterday was the day where everybody quits, it's like national quit day of your New Year's resolution, so 12 days in. Most people quit, and so they had all these this food and shakes and all this kind of stuff that was there. And uh, so anyways, a lot of people, you know, again, in the new year, they look back at the old year and they say, okay, this year I'm going to address this. I'm going to add this to my, to my routine. And so again, what do we need to address? What needs to be added to our daily routine? And so in Colossians chapter 3, you have the put off and put on principles here in Colossians chapter 3. So we're going to look at that a little bit. Again, um, we're 13 days in. I'm, I'm good for 13 days so far of um, exercising. So that's good, um, 13 days in. And uh, yesterday, uh, my boys and I, we rode our bikes over here and we were doing some exercising and things like that. And the, the team, the coffee ministry team was still here and they were loading up stuff, and um, I had to take one of them over to one of the buildings to get a package. And um, he said, oh, man, he goes, you, you come over here all the time and do this? I said, so far this year, every, all the time. <laughs> yep, I do this all the time. <laughs> so anyways, that was 12 days yesterday. So that was good. Um, anyways, uh, but we, we, we want to look at some things. And so um, it was the Sunday before the new year had started, and uh, we were in church um, uh, and uh, they were preaching from Colossians chapter 3, and I don't know if this ever happens to you when someone's preaching, but a thought kind of gets a hold of you, and you, this is going to sound bad, but you stop listening to the preacher, and you're kind of, you're in your own space there, and God's dealing with you in your own space. Anybody ever had that happen to them before, or is that just me? Okay, and so um, we hit these verses in Colossians 3, and I just kind of stopped, and um, I, want to, I, I was looking at it um, in the area of relationships, and especially family relationships. And, um, and so I, I send a text to my kids and to my wife, a, a group text, and I you know, paste those verses in, and I say, hey, this is something that we should think about as a family. And uh, I, again, didn't have my glasses with me. And so my wife shows me the text, and she said, why did you send this to Lynn? Lynn is my brother-in-law. I was like, Ugh. I thought that said Levi. Whoops. Anyways, so my brother-in-law got a little free message from me um, that day. But uh, Colossians chapter 3, and uh, I, I'm looking at family, but of course, um, man, it, it has to do with all kinds of relationships. It could be family, could be people at work, um, if you teach in the school, could be relationship with students, relationship with other teachers. I mean, it, it affects everything. And so, uh, again, for me, I was focusing more on family-type stuff because um, I don't know if you know this or not, but and I don't know if you could tell this, but my family isn't a perfect family, and I don't know if that registers with people sometimes. And uh, we live in a world where, you know, you have Facebook and Instagram, and so you're posting things out there. And I'll, I'll never forget, I went... Um, back to Connecticut for my grandma's funeral. And I was talking to my aunt, this was a few years ago, and um, she said, oh, it just looks like you have the perfect family. And I was like, really? And I guess Facebook could do that, right? If you're just looking at people's Facebook posts, you, you think about that, oh wow, they look at what they're doing now and look at that and oh, that's so. And uh, again, yesterday my wife went with my daughter and they were looking for a dress or something for homecoming. And uh, they're in the middle of a sunflower patch, cutting down sunflowers and things like that. And it got posted, and, and uh, I was laughing, first of all, because I had no idea what was going on outside of Miami. So 
looked like there was blizzards everywhere and things like that. And my wife's posting pictures of them in a flower patch with shorts on and picking flowers or whatever. But um, we, we all need work. And uh, again, as a, as a dad, I had so many answers before I had kids. I mean, I had all the answers before I had kids. I could tell people how to raise their kids and what they're doing wrong. And if you just do this, then everything will be fine. And uh, it, it gets interesting. Uh, but I wanted to start, if we could, in verse number 14. Colossians chapter 3. I want to start in verse 14 and then go back up um, to 12 and 13. But I wanted to start in verse 14 because I think this is where it all starts. Because he says in verse 14, if you look there, it says, Above all, above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And this idea of love, and it all starts with love. And if we can get this idea of love, it's going to change everything. It's going to change everything. Because what does love do? Well, love gets me to stop focusing on myself and start to focus on Christ and start to focus on other people. And if you're dealing with relationships, that's who we're talking about. My relationship with God and my relationship with other people. But a lot of us, we are stuck in selfishness. And we're thinking about ourselves and how things affect us. And, and uh, what does he say? He says, above all these things, put on love or put on charity. And really, love does change things. It changes the way we view things. And so I want to just give you a, a simple little illustration here. My wife and I, we go way, way, way back. We were in children's church together at, at church. And so we, were, we go way back. I mean, we didn't start dating in children's church, so don't get me wrong here. But when we were in high school, we did start to date. And so um, we went to the same church. We went to the same school. And, uh, and so we started dating. And uh, when I would go to her house, um, I would do different things. I remember one time I mowed the grass, you know, like, oh, no, 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 Mr. Stack, sit down, please let me mow the grass for you, and I'm going to take care of that. And I remember, like, when I would eat dinner over there, I would get up and pick up my plate, and is there anybody else I need to pick up your plate, and, and all this kind of stuff. And um, I, I, I don't know, I wasn't thinking, you know, love, I guess, clouds your mind, and you start to do all these things. Um, but one day, my mother-in-law, Heather's mom, was talking to my mom at church. And she was like, you know, it's just so nice to have him over at the house. He's so nice, and he just helps out around the house, and he does this, and he does that. And of course, when I got home, my mom was like, I just, I just wanted to say something here. What? She was telling me that you help with the dishes, and that you clear the the table, and you do this, and you do that. I was like, oh, man. And uh, what happened? Well, I wasn't thinking of myself. In my house, when I was with my family, you know, I was just thinking of only myself. But all of a sudden, I'm starting to think about other people, and it really did change. And it's, it's interesting how that has kind of carried on, because I'm not a real neat person, okay? And I, I shared a room with my brother, who is a very neat person, and uh, so that was kind of like the odd couple. And uh, we were together. And so my brother, basically, he would clean the room and he would just pile my stuff into the middle of the room. And then I would take it and put it in the closet, shove it in the closet and close the closet door. But anyways, um, that's kind of how we lived. And, you know, as I got married, I try my best to be a little bit neater and organized because my wife is a little bit neater and organized than that. And why do I do that? Well, love is what changes um, our mindset. We start to think about other people other than ourselves. And so this is kind of what I wanted to look at as we go up now to um, Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Notice what he says. He says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And so as you're thinking about this passage of Scripture, and you're getting into now the thought process of what are we going to put on? 
Well, when I love God and I love others, it's going to help me to put on these other things because now I'm going to start thinking about other people and not just myself. So notice the first thing he says, bowels of mercy. And uh, one of the things that we talked about this morning was compassion. Having compassion and making a difference. Well, if I truly love other people and I just don't love myself, I'm going to have compassion on them. I'm going to be able to, to put myself in that position. Now, this is one thing, I'll be honest, I'm not as compassionate as some other people are. And uh, so it is something that the Lord works on me about. But um, my kids, they don't normally come to me when they get hurt, if that makes sense. They don't come to me and say, Dad, I hurt my finger or whatever. Because what I do is I say, oh, let me see it. And then if it's like bent like, like this, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. How did you, you know, that is awesome. Or if there's bleeding or blood, I'm like, oh, cool, blood. And that's not what they're really looking for. And so my wife is much more compassionate and takes them aside and fixes everything up. But compassion is something that, um, that I try to, to work on. But this idea of compassion, I can't have it unless um, I love other people. And uh, what is he talking about here? Well, he's talking about a sympathetic spirit. And kind of going in and, and suffering with that person. And, uh, and I wonder about how other people's homes are, how other people's relationships are. But sometimes we don't find compassion in our own home. Uh, we don't find compassion of brothers and sisters, compassion of, we don't, we're, we're kind of harder on our own family than we are on other people. And we show more compassion to other people than we do to our family. Again, I'm just thinking about my own family situation, and you can apply this to other relationships as you see fit, but this idea of having a sympathetic spirit where you're taking that person's position and you're, you're taking it on yourself and you're thinking through what, what they're going through and what's happening in their life, and uh, we're trying to make a difference, as Pastor was talking about today. And then the idea of showing mercy just the simple idea of bowels of mercy, showing mercy to other people. And sometimes we don't show mercy like we should to other people. We're quick to judge. We're quick to criticize. Uh, we're quick to, um, to think negative thoughts instead of just simply showing mercy and being merciful. And uh, as we're thinking about these um, these characteristics, these attributes that we're talking about, we're, we're talking about Jesus Christ here, right? I mean, these are the attributes of Christ. And as Christians, what are we supposed to be? We're supposed to be Christ-like. We're supposed to be like Christ. And as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, what did Christ do? Well, he showed compassion on us, right? He showed compassion on us. He had a sympathetic spirit to where we were at. And what does he do? He shows mercy, and gives us a chance to trust Christ as our Savior. Are we extending that same mercy that we've been given to others? And it could be people in our family, could be people at work, could be people at our school, could be people in all likes, but are we compassionate people? The next one he talks about here is simply kindness. So you have our love for others and our love for God helps us be compassionate. It also helps us to be kind. To be kind. <laughs> and I don't know, um, sometimes people say things and it's just as simple as you can put it, unkind. Some people do things and as simple as you can put it, it's just unkind. And we talk about that. Man, be kind one to another and, and show kindness and do good things to people. Do good things for people. And when is the last time we did a good thing for someone? And again, if I, and I take my, for instance, um, when is the last time I did something good uh, for my kids? When is the last time my kids did something good for one another or for their mom or for, you know, just being an act of kindness, showing, doing something good in what we do or in what we say. But oftentimes in our relationships, the things that come out of our mouth are not kind they're actually rude or they're actually mean or mean-spirited. And so just the idea of being kind, 
doing good in what I say and in what I do. And again, how is that going to happen? Well, you got to go back again down to verse number 14 where it says that we got to put on love. And if we really love someone, we're going to be kind to them. We're going to be compassionate towards them. And again, that's what we're talking about here. When I truly love someone, I'm going to be kind. I'm going to go out of my way to be kind. I'm going to go out of my way to be compassionate. Also, he talks about this. He says, in humbleness of mind. So be compassionate, be kind, and then I put it this way. Be content. To be content. And why would I put humbleness with contentment? You know, why would we link those two up? Well, I think part of the reason why we have problems in relationships is because we're jealous, because of our pride. And uh, we're not content with the position that we're in, and so we're trying to make ourselves higher up. But if we can simply be content, not trying to build ourselves up, but actually not thinking about ourselves, but thinking about that other person. And in humbleness of mind, we're going to be kind and we're going to be compassionate. We're not going to worry about, well, how's that going to make me look? Or what are they going to do for me? Or how am I? No, I'm going to be compassionate. And I'm going to be kind and I'm going to be content. And I'm going to let God take care of the rest. And what does the Bible say? Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. And so the idea of just simply being content. And are we? Are we content or are we always trying to make ourselves just a little higher or put ourselves in a little better position? Or are we content? And can we be humble? And if we truly, again love God and love other people, then what are we going to do? Well, we're going to want them to, to have it better than us. We're going to put them higher than ourselves. So simply being content. Then he talks about meekness. Meekness. And uh, meekness is um, power under control. So I put this down to be in control. To be in control. That's what meekness is, and we're spirit-controlled. Obviously, for Christians, we want to be controlled by the Holy Spirit, and, uh, and so we want to be in control. And again, we're talking about we have to put on love first, and love God and love others. That helps us be compassionate, helps us be kind, helps us be content, not looking out for ourselves, but humble, and then also to be in control. Now again, you put yourself in your family situation, right? Put yourself in family situations. Has there ever been a time where you were not in control? That you lost your temper? Or that you said something that you wish you hadn't had said? You were not in control. This is what we're talking about with meekness. Power, we have power to say whatever we want. But the power has to be under control. Again, your relationships at work. Have you ever said something or done something that you said, man, that was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. Your relationships with a student at school. Have you ever said something or, or done something that you're like, man, I wish I wouldn't have said that. I wish I wouldn't have done that. I think we can all relate to that. But what happens? Well, if we truly love those people that we are dealing with, that we have relationships with, it's going to help us to be in control. And it's going to help us to have meekness, power under control. And then he gets into the last one here, and that's long-suffering. To be continuing on. Because this all sounds great on January 13th. You know, we can be like, yes, in my relationships this year, in 2019, I have been compassionate. I have been kind. I have been content. I have been in control but we got to continue on. Like we talked about yesterday was National um, Quit Day. Uh, we got to continue on doing this stuff. And that's what he says, long-suffering. Now again, you have relationships, right? You know the relationships with the people that maybe tonight you're saying, oh yeah, there's a guy at work or there's um, someone in my family or there's a person in the school, whatever. You have a relationship, right, that, you're, that you struggle with and you are trying to, to do, have you guys ever found that that person just knows how to push your buttons, right? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? They just know exactly what to do or to say, and, and you lose control, or you um, say something unkind, or you, you do something 
um, that you're like, man, I, I, I messed up again. He's saying, look, it's not going to be easy <laughs> to be long-suffering, to continue on. Don't quit. Don't quit. You're probably going to want to quit, okay? I'm just going to put that out there to you. You're probably going to want to quit. You're probably going to have someone that drives you crazy. But he is saying, be long-suffering. Continue on. Don't quit. And you may make a mistake, and you may fail. Well, what do we do when we fail? Do we just quit? Well, that's it. I messed up. That's, that's all. What do we do? Well, we should go back and ask for forgiveness and ask the Lord to forgive us, and we get back up and we get going again. We don't quit, and that's what he's saying, long-suffering. And, uh, and so notice two of the things he says here in Colossians 3.13. In Colossians 3.13, he says, first of all, be forbearing. Be forbearing. He says, forbearing one another. So here's a couple things to think about. Bearing burdens. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard this statement before, but it, it kind of sticks out to me. They say, hurt people hurt people. And so some of the people that you may be having a hard time with in a relationship, there's a reason why you're having a hard time, because they're hurt. And because they're hurt, they want to hurt other people. They want other people to hurt as well. And if we can understand this, that they are bearing some burdens, and can we help them um, bear the burdens? And uh, I was thinking about this um, idea because uh, in February we have Guy Dowd coming um, to, to, the, um, to the ministry here. He's going to speak in chapel and then do something with the parents. And uh, I love his, his idea of reach them to teach them. You know, try to reach them so that you can also teach them. And if we can do that with a person or struggling with a relationship, if we can try to reach them, so then that we can also teach them and, and help them with the burden that they're bearing. So bear burdens. Also, bearing with others' weaknesses. Bearing with others' weaknesses. As we're talking about forbearing other people, they, they have weaknesses, just like you have weaknesses. When you make a mistake or when you fail, you like people to forbear with you, you know, to bear with your weaknesses. Well, we have to do the same thing with other people's weaknesses. And then don't render evil for evil. <laughs> Forbearing one another means we do not render evil for evil. When they do something to us, our natural tendency is to return evil for evil correct anybody else struggle with that that's i think just a fleshly uh nature that we have we if someone hurts us we want to hurt them if someone does this says this to us we're going to say something back to them and what is he saying forbear one another don't render evil for evil and if we really want to improve on our relationships and we really love other people we're going to be careful about what we do to them and then, of course, the last thing, not only be forbearing, but also to be forgiving. As we're being long-suffering, we're going to forbear one another, and we are going to forgive one another. And notice what he says in verse 13. Forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And I always hate this statement, but it's a true statement. I never have the right not to forgive someone. I always need to forgive someone. There's not anything that anyone can do to me that I'm not supposed to forgive them. And uh, we like to hold grudges. Or well, not we like to, but we do to have a tendency to hold grudges. And uh, I struggle with it. And what does God say? We need to forbear one another just like Christ forgave you. You need to forgive other people. And again, um, did you deserve God's forgiveness? Nope. Not one of us in here deserved God's forgiveness. But did he forgive us? Yes. Does he offer salvation for us? Yes. Can we be forgiving to other people? Yes, we can. Now, these are all things that sound awesome. And uh, when I was sitting there in the church service, I was like, this is so good. And this is underlining things and just oh man studying it out and oh this this all makes perfect sense 
really difficult to live though when you have a difficult relationship with whoever it is that that we're talking about and so again what is going to be the key verse 14 above all these things that we just talked about put on charity which is in the bond of perfectness again we're talking about maturity spiritual maturity that perfectness how are we going to be like Christ? Well, we've got to, first of all, it starts with love. And then when we have a genuine love for those people, then it allows us to be compassionate. It allows us to be kind. It allows us to be content. It allows us to be in control. And it allows us to continue on. And so that's what we want to look at tonight. And that's what I want to leave with you tonight. And just ask you, how are your relationships? Who is it that the Holy Spirit has already kind of put on your heart and on your mind of someone that you're like, Ugh. can I just encourage you? Love them. Pray for them. Just like pastors talking about. Pray for them. Ask them. Ask God for love for that person and, uh, and, and start reaching out to them. Be compassionate. Be kind. Be content. Be in control and be continuing on. And I don't know who it is for you. Um, I know that I've got areas that I need to work on. And so these are the things that God spoke to my heart about. So I just wanted to take some time tonight and share those with you. And, and again, none of us in here are perfect. We all struggle. So if we can help you out in any way, if we can pray with you in any way, we'd love to do that. Um, we've got the pastors here. We've got a nice just church family here. And uh, we'd be willing to do that um, for you and with you if you would like. So let's close the service here in a word of prayer, and I'll turn the service over to Pastor. He can close it as he wants to, but let's pray. Lord, I'm thankful for the evening that you've given to us. I'm thankful for the relationships that you have put into our lives and provided for us. Lord, there's sometimes challenging people that we deal with, but Lord, I pray that we would, with your help and with your strength, overcome those challenges. Lord, may we love people. May we not be selfish people thinking only of ourselves, but Lord, I pray that you would give us a love that only you can give because it's a love that comes from you. And so, Lord, I pray for the families here. Lord, I know there's no perfect families in this building. Uh, I know we all have our own personal struggles, so Lord, I pray for wisdom and guidance for each family here. I pray that um, each person would be submissive to you and to your leading and your guiding. But Lord, may we truly love each other. Pray for those uh, teachers in here that have students or classes that maybe they're struggling with. Lord, I pray that you would give them a love for those students and Lord, help them to see you at work. I pray for those that have coworkers, neighbors, whatever it might be, Lord, whatever relationship it is, I pray that they would turn it over to you and Lord, truly love those people and uh, watch you work in their lives. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you'd help us to depend on you because Lord, we can't do it in our own strength. We need you and your help and your strength. We ask now your um, blessing on the close of this service. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.